Amazing people. Amazing stories. Amazing films. This is Amazing TV. Something is lurking. I was just astounded at the size of it. In our homes and backyards. The baby's dead. At the length of 13 feet, it's got enough venom to drop and kill an 8,000 pound elephant. Hidden in plain view. Hybrids are often problematic. A beast that's appearing where it shouldn't be. Some of the worst invasive species are often hybrids. Monster Quest is searching for pythons in America. Got him. Ah! Witnesses around the world report seeing monsters. Are they real or imaginary? Science searches for answers. On Monster Quest. The Everglades. Florida. This lush tropical paradise with warm, temperate weather is popular with tourists. But something frightening may be making its home here. A slithering menace that strikes fear in the hearts of many. 20 feet long, it was absolutely huge. It's large enough to kill an adult human. They could literally stretch their jaws three times the normal diameter. We've had a, a baby strangled by a 12-foot python. Eyewitnesses report seeing massive serpents measuring 15 to 20 feet in length and weighing up to 400 pounds. They're known to suffocate, then swallow their prey whole. These beasts have brown or black scales and most closely resemble giant pythons. Never have I seen anything like this and as tragic as this. In the middle of the night, a large Burmese python escaped from its enclosure. Suddenly free to roam the house, it slithered into the room of the family's youngest child. The python attacked the two-year-old girl who was sleeping in her crib. 911, do you need police, fire, or an ambulance? It's an emergency. Okay, what do you need? You need a police, fire, or an ambulance? I don't know, the baby's dead. The uh, snake, had, uh, it appears it had gotten up on a toy chest and then into the crib. The boyfriend of the baby's mother uh, discovered the snake that morning, wrapped around the child in the crib. Uh, he immediately grabbed a knife and a meat cleaver and, and started stabbing that snake until he was able to release the the baby from the from the grips of the snake tell me exactly what happened our snake we have a burmese python and she's about 12 foot long she got out of the cage last night and got into the baby's crib and strangled her to death <laughs> stay on the line please the police responded to the scene and began to hunt for the killer python i get there and uh, they're explaining to me that the, uh, the victim is in the ambulance, already been pronounced deceased, and that the snake was still in the residence. Florida Wildlife Commission officers were called in to remove the illegally owned monster Burmese python. We weren't sure whether the snake was going to be alive or dead when we, when we went into the residence. It turned out to still, still be alive. Well, the, the snake was wounded, so you don't know how a wounded, wounded snake would react. Pythons are not indigenous to the United States, but wildlife officials from across the country have been inundated with reports of these massive snakes. This Burmese python was captured in Apopka, Florida. This monster's approximately 20 feet in length and weighs over 300 pounds. These deadly beasts are coming into contact with man more often. However, some experts are skeptical of the danger to humans. 
This researcher says snakes simply are not aggressive. I think the biggest misconceptions that um, most people have are that snakes are out to get them, that they care about people, and that's completely false. Dr. Whit Gibbons studies these invading predators at the Savannah River Ecology Lab in South Carolina. Snakes want to get away from people, and the, the responses of snakes where they do bite people are totally in defense. It's because the snakes are scared, and they are defending themselves. Gibbons agrees that the population of foreign species may be expanding. If we have individuals that have a genetic predisposition to living in a temperate area, they could persist possibly in some areas way outside of Florida. Now, Monster Quest will launch a search to confirm reports that invasive pythons are taking over places like Florida. The search will start near the Everglades National Park, not far from the homes, playgrounds, and schools of heavily populated South Miami. Okay, so this is the Everglades National Park right here. Bob, what area do you think we should, we should search for down here, you and I? Animal expert Dale Pearson will lead the search near the Everglades. And I think we'll go close to the National Park boundary right over here near this uh, urban area. Pearson will be aided by local guide Bob Freer. Well, we'll scout the area so we'll know what it is we're looking at when we go out at night. But uh, give us a chance to kind of look around, see if we can find out where maybe some of the snakes are holding up during the day. And then we'll go out at night and do some uh, more building work around the urban area and some road running. The science team will test whether the massive snakes have migrated to other parts of the country. Joe Wazalewski, a wildlife biologist, will explore New York's Central Park, where invading snakes have been reported. He will see if environmental conditions could support a breeding population of these deadly predators. All right, well, I'm going to New York, and then we're going to check Central Park to see if it could hold a big constrictor and, and, and if the animal could live there. And then we're headed to some subways and we're going to check in the subways uh, if their snakes are down there. Pearson briefs Wazalewski on two modified pieces of camera technology that will aid in his search. We got the micron infrared system. We can use that temperature and stuff like that. We're going to have it dialed into pythons in an urban environment down here. So when we send it up, it'll already be calibrated for that. So all you'll have to do is take it, aim and shoot. Okay. And this? Um, that's the lipstick cam. We've got a couple of mag lights on it. And that's been good for like, uh, you know, you can go in uh, some underneath stairwells and in drain pipes and things like that. Be able to check it out without sticking your hand in there. All right. Well, it sounds like a good plan, you know. I'll get the gear all ready and then uh, let's see what we can find. Good luck. All right. You too, man. To help familiarize Pearson with the snakes they might encounter, Freer shows him some of the pythons that he has captured. So, you've been, you caught a 20-foot python around about three miles from here. Correct, yeah. And then you've, you've also been finding a lot of these Burmese pythons. Yeah. You have four rows of teeth on the top, two on the bottom, over 100 teeth. They basically curve back like fish hooks. So when they when they grab their prey with their teeth, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's not getting loose. So if one of us gets nailed tonight, then that's a good chance that's going to tear us open. Then very good chance. Once they bite, he'll start to twist and wrap, which will pull his head around at an angle, and uh, yeah, it's going to be quite painful. What do you what are you guys finding that these things are actually eating? Some of the most astounding things I think are it's probably uh, the fact that they're eating alligators. Uh, who would have thought that, you know, a snake right. would be eating an alligator. And the largest mammal I've heard of so far is a uh, bobcat, uh, so, which is, you know, quite a large cat. And so how far are we away from, like, a, a population center around here? I mean, how close is, is uh, our people? You'll be in a residential area straight east of here, about uh, 200 yards. So these things are coming right up to the edge of the population centers. It's not like you have to travel deep into the Everglades to find them. They're not only coming right up to the edge, 
of the urban areas. They're actually venturing right in. The team drives to its staging location near the Everglades. The abandoned factory's foundation is full of stagnant water, crumbling concrete, and abundant hiding places. It's an ideal breeding ground for these monster snakes. So this is the place, huh? This is where uh, we want to try your fancy little camera. All right, well, we'll see if you got anything living in the ductwork or in the pipes. And give it a shot. All right. The structure is 150 feet high and surrounded by catwalks. The team starts its search at the building's highest point. Like right up in here. Oh, damn, look at those spiders. Abandoned for 50 years, the walls are filled with insulation and debris. Looks like that area is pretty clean. At least there's no pythons in it. The team walks the perimeter, looking for spots where the camera can investigate hidden areas. Yeah, let's go ahead and check. There we go. What do you think about this one right there? Yeah, let's try it. The team notices an open grate above what was once a sub-basement loading dock. Look, you see the water, how the water's moving down there? Yeah. Something big is moving around in the water down there. Look at that. What the hell? You see anything in there? That was something, something like something. surfaced. Pearson and Freer are unable to see what is moving in the water. They decide to wait for nightfall when the thermal camera will reveal more. It's probably uh, we've done enough for the day. It's just too hot. Let's, let's go ahead and come back out uh, this evening. When it cools down, they start to come out moving around. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready for that. Monster Quest is searching for giant pythons that may be taking over Florida. Monster snakes have been feared in North America since the earliest settlers arrived on its shores. America is expected to find monsters when they arrived in an unknown land, and they did to some extent. The Europeans encountered deadly snakes previously unknown to them. They found the snake was an integral part of Native American culture. The settlers also discovered prehistoric burial mounds in the shape of giant snakes. The Americans took a perverse pride in the monstrousness of the wildlife and compared themselves to rattlesnakes and said, we are dangerous, we cannot be toyed with, don't tread on us. And the rattlesnake became a sort of American icon to represent the independence and the dangerousness of the uh, American settlers. In 1897, the New York Times reported that a large python was killing natives on a small island in the Florida Keys. They sent a search party into the woods and found the 34-foot python eating a deer. It was later discovered that the snake had escaped from a circus. In 1904, Another New York Times article described a snake two stories long that had slipped out of the third floor window of a bird and animal store. It was eventually recovered, but only after a crowd of several hundred had gathered to watch the capture. A natural disaster in 1992 was likely the cause of the explosion of the python population in Florida. Hurricane Andrew did a tremendous amount of damage to facilities and homes in urban areas in South Florida when it struck. Its eye went right over the center of the warehouse area where most of the tropical pets coming into the United States are kept. Gordon Rhoda is a zoologist who has studied the Burmese python and found them to be one of the most adaptable species of large snakes. The species of python that's spreading rapidly through South Florida at the moment is frequently called the Burmese python, which is technically a subspecies of the Indian python. 
The species as a whole has an incredibly wide habitat range. So it occurs everywhere from thorn scrub deserts to mountainous areas, to coastal plains, to tropical rainforests, to swampy areas, to many different kinds of environments. Problem of the Burmese python in South Florida is new in the sense that the population has really rocketed off, uh, became very numerous only quite recently. North of Okeechobee, and now we're getting reports up near Tampa. So the evidence is they're spreading north. Rhoda has designed a study to determine what areas of the country have a climate suited to the Burmese python. Our study was designed to figure out how much of the United States is at risk from possible colonization by the Burmese python. The reason that's important is that we and many other people had assumed that this is a tropical animal that couldn't become established in the temperate United States. So we did a climate match and we're surprised to learn that in fact it can occur in very temperate areas. The study projects that continued changes in temperature will open new corridors for python migration. There are about 10 or 12 species in the genus python. Now, whether they will breed with each other in many cases is not known because their natural ranges don't overlap. In Florida, they do occur together. Because they're so closely related and because in captivity they will breed together and produce offspring, there's reason to be concerned about hybridization occurring. Some of the worst invasive species, especially plants, are often hybrids. That The hybrids, for one reason or another, have that combination of traits that is lacking in the wild types, but makes them very good at being invasive species. Rhoda believes that pythons could now currently invade areas as far north as Washington, D.C. With global climate change, it will extend further north. Uh, the climate match will go further north. By the turn of the, this century, um, places like New York City would be within the climate match. The science team is in New York to determine if this is a suitable habitat for pythons to survive and breed. There is a theory in existence right now that pythons can go as far north as, as, as here, in New York, and west over to San Francisco. And we're just here today just to kind of check it out to see the feasibility of that theory. Joe Wazalewski makes his way to Central Park. There's uh, not many wild places left in New York City, but Central Park is, is uh, about 800 acres of, uh, of greenery. And if there were a snake anywhere in New York City, this is a good place for it to be. Snakes uh, like warm-blooded prey, and, and there's chipmunks and squirrels and running around all over, and all different types of birds. So there's a lot of potential prey here. They, they like shelter. They like, like rock outcroppings and, and any other type of shelter. So any area like that, you could turn up a snake. Pythons can survive in temperatures as low as 40 degrees. All in all, snakes being cold-blooded, like, like uh, warm temperatures. I found some of these really neat hollow logs, and I'm going to check a few of them. If there's any snake around, he could be inside here. The team has brought a lipstick camera to search inside fallen logs. I think our best bet is to come back at night and check this with the thermal cam. Even though snakes are cold-blooded, the thermal camera can still be used, as pythons can generate a small amount of body heat through muscular contractions. There, there's something. When I saw the size of the head and the body sticking out onto the roadway, I realized that, yeah, there's no way I could catch this up by myself. Bob Freer was called to remove a snake from a backyard, but he was skeptical of the snake's size. 
Occasionally, we'd be getting calls throughout the year on huge snakes, and the huge snakes usually ended up being about uh, seven to eight feet long. The person that called me was familiar with pythons uh, and said he was positive it was a python and uh, said it's huge. Seeing the creature, Freer was shocked. The head was actually the size of my two hands together. It was huge. And I couldn't see the whole body and I was going back into the woods. But I was like all the other people that called me. I swear that this snake had to be 20 feet long. It was absolutely huge. Freer realized the beast was too big to handle alone. So we went over there, and uh, as we're getting ready to grab it, we're trying to decide, well, do we grab it like it's a lost pet, or do we, you know, grab it quickly and hold it like it's an aggressive snake? And when we got closer to it and started to see the size of it, we thought we probably better grab a hold of it and hold on, because if it turned out it was aggressive and somebody got bit by it, it was going to be bad. Uh, when I jumped on the snake and grabbed its head, uh, the minute it opens its mouth, I realized, yeah, it wasn't somebody's pet. It was mean, it was aggressive. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I could hold on it. It was twisting out of my hands. Maybe I should have waited for some more help. Freer and his colleagues were able to wrestle the snake into submission. No doubt about it, this was a monstrous snake living right in people's backyards in an urban area. How a snake could be living in this type of area and not be seen before this, it's just amazing. The expedition team is investigating a location on the edge of the Florida Everglades where they suspect giant pythons may be breeding. I'm just going to try to turn the sensitivity down just a little bit. Try to cut down the false readings. Here's another entrance to the duct system down here low. Ow! Son of a biscuit! And this place is just jagged edges all over. There's the, a python could get right up that right there though. So I pretty much scanned this whole building. Yeah, I'm not I think catching nothing here yet. Yeah, I think we probably ought to hit the road a little bit, do some road running, and we can do that on the way to another building. So if we don't have luck on the road, we'll move to the building. All right. <clears throat> Sounds good. Let's do it then. The team emerges from the old factory and adjusts their equipment for a search of the nearby area. Their find comes quickly. You want to turn this record deck off, Troy? I got one over here. Got one over here. See it over to the right of you, Dale? Oh, yup. Yeah. Ready? Got him. Nice. All right. Baby Burmese python. Fresh hatch. They are breeding here in this location. We got one. For real, for real. Monster Quest is in Florida, where giant pythons may be breeding and could start to threaten man. In the 20 years since Hurricane Andrew, large snakes have increased in number throughout Florida. The dangers of pythons in urban areas is uh, very complex. First of all, you have the dangers to the normal wildlife, the ecology that's out there. They're eating everything that's moving our uh, birds, our mammals, anything. There's also the danger to our pets, our cats and dogs. Uh, and then of course there's the danger to humans. These animals are doing what they normally do in the wild. They're hunting for their food. And this year alone we've ran over 50 calls where we've gone out and responded and recovered uh, pythons. And pythons aren't the only deadly snakes in the area. I was going to die. No. Pablo Viscoso was installing cable TV at a local apartment complex. I had to run a cable in the backyard. 
So the backyard has a lot of bushes and trees. So when I try to reach one of them, I put my arm in one coconut tree to reach it, you know, to balance myself. And I got bitten by by snake. The pain was immediate, but Viscoso didn't realize just how injured he was. He has a numbness on my arm right away. And I keep moving my arm because I can't feel it. You know, it's like a, your arm is slipping or something. But I didn't know there was a snake. I just felt something. And when I pulled my arm, I saw the snake going down the tree. But that's how I realized there was a snake bite. He was struck by a green mamba, a deadly venomous tree snake indigenous to East Africa. The snake's venom quickly began to take effect. I started feeling worse, you know. My face was, uh, it was kind of like, they said kind of like a one stroke. You know, half of my right side of my face, I have no feeling on it. And my arm, all, all the right side. At that point, I think I will, I will die. I was going to die. The Miami-Dade Fire Department was called, and the anti-venom needed to save his life was administered. If one of these African green mamas beat me, yes, I'm very sure that there's more you know, foreign snakes over here in Florida. Even more terrifying than deadly venomous snakes is the possibility of crossbreeding between snake species. Exotic snakes are sold all over the United States. In fact, online, you could just type in and, and, and buy pretty much whatever kind of exotic snake you want, from pythons to boas to whatever. Snakes that would never meet in their natural habitats now intermingle in Florida. This causes some to fear a monster hybrid, a snake with crushing strength of a constrictor and the deadly venom of a cobra. There are some scientists that's, that's uh, terrified that they're going to get together and they're going to reproduce and provide some kind of monster snake. Wozolewski says that hybrids could happen only within the same family of snakes. When two snakes that are very closely related, when their ranges overlap, sometimes there's some hybridization that takes place in the wild. Pythons are more likely to crossbreed or hybridize than, than other snakes. Usually it's hard to tell them apart. Sometimes they have characteristics of both. Sometimes they retain more of the characteristics of one or the other. Scientists have proven that hybridization of snakes is not uncommon. In terms of hybrids, I know of uh, people that have bred rat snakes and king snakes. Uh, people have crossbred reticulated pythons with Burmese pythons and there is some instances of African rock pythons with Burmese pythons. Wazalewski is investigating whether the habitat of New York could be a likely location for breeding. He's looking for pythons the most adaptable of the exotic breeds. Night has fallen here in Central Park. Now that it's dark, it's time for me to look for the snakes. An abundant food source would be the first necessity. Well, there, there's something. Wait a minute. What is that, a rat? Cat? That's moving off a raccoon? Wait, it's going right up the tree. There it is. It's a raccoon. You know, everyone knows they eat rats, squirrels, and things like that. But Burmese pythons really like raccoons. We found raccoons in their stomachs on more than one occasion. Well, we checked and we didn't find any snakes. However, we did see a lot of native wildlife, which means there is food for snakes, so there is a chance they could be here. But I think I've got one more place to check tomorrow. The expedition team has found a baby python near the Florida Everglades. Got him. How old is this one right here? Uh, just a couple months. Just a couple of months. Look um, at that, man. You did it, man. Yeah. You brought us right to him. And if this one right here 
is an indication of anything, it's an indication that they are breeding here, for sure. I guarantee you somebody didn't just come lose their baby python out here. Oh, he almost tried, bit me. tried to bite you a little he bit, sure didn't did. he? And he's squeezing on my hand there. You can feel even this little tiny baby one has got a little bit of power to him. How many uh, offspring can, can a decent sized Burmese python produce? 24, 28 is, is very common. And, and, and into the 50s and 60s, not even unheard of. These things can. They can put get, out the eggs, yeah. Wow. I don't know, what do you think? You think we should sweep around the rest of this building, see if there's any more babies or anything around here? Or you, what do you think? Uh, I really think we ought to get to the road and uh, I, I want to catch a big one. And we need to get, get on the road and, and start looking for them to cross. Suddenly, one of the team members sounds an alert. They have found the beast. <sighs> He's all the way down the other end too. He said to hurry, so that means it's not a baby. Monster Quest is investigating whether giant pythons could be invading America. It just completely blew my mind. This is not a natural habitat for a large snake. It was a peaceful fall day in Central Park with children playing, but something terrible was lurking. Come in, come in, I have an Easter egg on a large snake. That's a good copy. Our department was notified by an individual that uh, there was a snake in a rock. Uh, my division responded. The nine-foot boa constrictor was huge. Panic spread as park rangers and the NYPD were called in. When we responded, uh, the individual pointed out where the snake was. The first concern was the public's safety. But I will also be concerned for people in the sense that they will be scared. The snake resisted all efforts to remove it from the rocks. Originally we tried to uh, gently pull out the snake. That didn't work. Uh, the second time around we tried to pour water on that, pour water on the snake and loosen it up. That didn't work too well either. So eventually we had to uh, gently chisel uh, the rock away from its body and then we were able to pull it out of the rock uh, crevice. And at that time we realized the snake was nine feet long and it had a red tail and it uh, was brown in color. The park's rangers eventually captured the snake and put it on display in the zoo. The boa was likely released by its owner when the snake got too big. Joe Wazalewski has moved his investigation to a warm location, an abandoned subway tunnel which could provide shelter for snakes during the colder winter months. We haven't checked underground. Uh, this could be a place where snakes could live. So while we're here in New York, we're going to check it. This looks like a good spot. Let's see what we got here is check the temperature and humidity down here. I have this particular device that measures both. I'd sooner think there'd be some type of amphibian uh, and uh, salamander or frog down here than a snake. But this thing goes for five blocks. There are little ways that snakes can get down. And, and they like humidities in, in the range of 65, 70 to 80, 85 percent. So snakes like it warm and, and they like it a little on the moist side. Wazalewski explores deeper into the tunnel and finds a good place to use the lipstick camera. Let's see if it fits in this storm drain. No, nothing in there. But there's a lot of areas to look in here. Maybe when a cold front comes, it might run some of those snakes into that storm drain and they might actually come down here. With the, with the constant temperature that it has here, and the humidity, I mean, it's really good for a snake. So it's, 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 it is possible that they could use this because 
Uh, snakes use what they call a hibernaculum, which is underground, usually under the frost line. And I believe this place here would, would fit the bill. In Florida, the expedition is searching the Everglades for deadly giant pythons. The team has just received a call. He said to hurry, so that means it's not a baby. Someone take my backpack, take the hook, and let's drag them into the roadway so we're sure we don't lose them. Come on over this way. Walk right around. Yep, there you go. Use the fat end. That's good. You got him. Got him. You got him. Okay, now you want to stop these from coiling around you. Don't no, stay back. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now we'll it. go ahead and examine them a little bit, and you can see where some something's got his head. And we're recently too. That's a fresh wound on his head. Look at the top of his head is gouged open. He's got maggots in there. I'm surprised he's still alive. Push, push, don't lose him. Ow! And keep pushing the coils down as he tries to coil around you. Just take your hand, push those down. Yeah. Oh. oh, nice. Oh. I can't believe these things are frickin' living wild in Florida. It's not a myth, it's real. There's really gnarly pythons living in Florida. Whoever says it's not true is full of crap. Ah, because this... Switch hands, switch hands on the neck. Ah. That is the neck of the other hand. This thing... Oh. Ah. Is as much as one person can handle. And this is what? What is this, Bob? What do you think? A six foot? Six foot? Seven foot? No, no, you're good... Uh, it's a good ten foot. All I know is, is that... This is, it's everything I can do to keep this thing from frickin' breaking my wrist, so. Yeah, he's wrapping my hand right now. You can feel it, you could probably crush your hand. Yep, go ahead, yep, okay. Hey, watch your hand now. His head's already come around, his head's come around. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <sighs> Did that just happen? Wow. I'm shaking. Monster Quest is searching for giant pythons in America. These deadly beasts may be spreading across the country. This snake expert survived an encounter with a 20-foot Burmese python. This scientist believes that pythons can survive much further north than previously believed. This park ranger captured a large boa constrictor in Central Park. This researcher has gone hunting for python wintering spots deep underground. And the expedition team found a giant python in the Everglades. Now it's got my other arm. For anybody that doesn't believe that this animal is here and that it's established, I just spent 15 minutes on the side of the road wrestling with a 10-foot animal and it's completely real. They're actually here they're actually breeding, and they can get to be 15 to 20 feet long. The injured Burmese python was taken to a veterinarian who confirmed that the beast had been injured by a human. So he's got a tick. This looks to me like chop, chop with a machete, and they got away. I think if it was a gator, he'd have wounds on the bottom. Something on the, underneath, yep. And so what they're doing is they're taking the heads and then just trying to chop like this. And of course, you chop him once, he struggles, chops again, and then he gets away. Yeah. And their brain is very small. Jen, I don't know if you've ever seen it. Their brain is right, it's about the size of a pea, right about there, surrounded by a very thick, bony skull. So it could very easily have been hit by a, a machete, not, not damage the brain at all. 
even injured, the python was difficult for Pearson to handle, and it would have easily overpowered a child. The team has established that pythons are breeding in Florida, where there are other exotic and deadly snakes. I have one that I saved kind of last to show you. Okay. Not native of here, but unfortunately uh, some escaped after Hurricane Andrew. We also had a handler or a licensed person that uh, didn't keep them well. They escaped. Uh, and we have come across a king cobra shedded skin. And uh, we do know for a fact, because we have actually caught other cobras that, that you know, yes, they are down here. And uh, we can come across them. In addition to the python infestation you got down here, there's potentially king cobras loose now in southern Florida. Unfortunately, yes. King cobras are the largest venomous snakes in the world. They exist in the wild only in Asia. Wow, that thing is huge. In Florida alone, there are over 170 licensed owners of venomous snakes, but many go unregistered. And he's actually eating pythons. We give him some of these birdies we find. He's, he's a snake eater, yeah. But the cobras are more likely to eat a python than mate with one. Okay, to grab his tail and bring it up, Albert. I can think of no venomous species of snake that would would ever hybridize with a, a python in, in the wild if they saw one another the bigger one might want to try to eat the other one but they certainly would never want to breed and and in terms of uh, uh, physical abilities the, the the organs the reproductive organs are completely different it wouldn't that it was like a key in a lock they would they would never uh, a venomous species of snake could never uh, reproduce with the python. The Monster Quest team meets to discuss its findings. How'd it go in New York? Pretty interesting. Uh, Central Park was pretty neat. Uh, you know, native snakes can survive there in the cold weather because they're adapted. They can go underground. Well, we had some good luck. We had some good luck. Didn't we actually, we yeah. actually caught two. We caught a, uh, okay. a newborn, maybe uh, a month, two months old. Yep. It's that time of the year. Yeah. And then we caught. Uh, actually, we didn't. We didn't get a measure on it, but about a ten footer. Oh. I, I guess what this expedition proves is that in South Florida, monsters are real. <laughs> right. and, in, and in this case, it's a it's a twenty foot Burmese python, or a whole community of them breeding close to urban areas. The team has made some interesting discoveries. There are deadly Burmese pythons breeding near Florida's Everglades, close to the population center of Miami. And even more terrifying, there may be wild king cobras living here. These beasts are increasingly coming into contact with adults and children. The team has also discovered that the underground environments of major metropolitan cities might be warm enough to allow these creatures to exist much further north than previously believed. The exotic snakes in urban areas, uh, it's going to increase the numbers. Uh, it's not going to go away. It's a novel predator, and it's potentially a serious problem um, from a human safety standpoint. The python population, or the problem we have in the Everglades, has not peaked as yet. And, and I believe the numbers are going to get larger as well as their sizes are going to get larger over time. So if you're in the South Florida area, or if you're in an area where you hear that there might be these invasive species out, you need to take it seriously. You can't say, ah, it won't happen to me, ah, it's no big deal. I'm here to tell you right now, these animals are real, they're really out here, and they really can kill you. Thank you for watching The Amazing TV. Don't forget to subscribe.